Well, this is day 12 of our 14 days through the book of Matthew. Today we read chapters 24 and 25. And I'm going to read uh, just two verses that we began today's reading with from chapter 24. And then make a comment on how, as Christians, God has given us a way to live with that continual sense of encouragement and hope and feeling of belonging. So, uh, chapter 24, verses 1 and 2. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? Surely I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now, historians tell us that when the Romans under Titus came into Jerusalem in AD 70, 40 years after the crucifixion, 40 years being the time of testing and trial, the Jews had not repented of their, or many of the Jews and the Jewish leaders, in particular the Jewish religious system, had not repented of crucifying its Messiah, and in came the Romans and they destroyed Jerusalem and they destroyed the temple and it's never been rebuilt. And when they destroyed it, the uh, gold in the temple melted because they burned the temple. And when it had cooled down, the soldiers came and removed all the stones one from another to get to the, the gold that had run between the cracks. Well, whatever the reason was, every single stone of the temple was lifted one from another and the prophecy of Jesus was literally fulfilled. And this was 40 years later after Jesus was crucified. So this is the, it's kind of the conclusion to what we were looking at yesterday, where Jesus, in the most um, unapologetic terms, declared the Old Testament system and its religious leadership and its laws and its it, the whole religious system of Israel, he declared it to be defunct. And he passed judgment on the religious leaders of, of Israel. Judaism was now passing away. And this is the conclusion to that now, that the, the central point, the central physical location that gave Judaism all of its, its, its unity, the temple in Jerusalem, would now be destroyed. Okay, so here's what I want to pick out of that. Beliefs have parking places. What do I mean by that? We live in a physical world. And God loves bodies. God loves the physical, the physicality of the world we live in. It's not like... The Gnostics believed and like Buddhism believes that everything that's physical is actually bad and that the goal of spirituality is somehow to be free from the physical. That's not a biblical worldview. We are a holistic being as human beings. We are, yes, we, we have a soul, we, we have mind, we have intellect, we have emotions, we have a um, we, we have a, a sort of non-physical entity to our being that even if your body is destroyed, you still continue to exist. Yes, that's true. But we also live in bodies. And that's the way God wants it. That's why there's going to be a general resurrection. And then the wicked will be judged. And the, the, the righteous will live in resurrected physical bodies in God's kingdom for all eternity. God wants a physical aspect to his creation. What that means is there's going to be a physical expression to our worship of God and to the family into which he calls us, right? Judaism remained so strong and still actually remains today all around the world. Where, do, where does that unity of the Jewish people, let's take them as an example, although we could take many religions. Where does that unity find its continual energy? Where does it get fueled? Where does it get renewed? It gets renewed in the synagogue. It gets renewed at the Shabbat meal on a Friday night. There are these physical gatherings, these regular physical gatherings of the Jewish people. 
that keeps their community tight. Now, of course, bound to those physical places where they gather are a whole set of beliefs. There is an entire set of scriptures that defines what, why we are gathering, what we're gathering to, what we're celebrating, the songs that we're singing. Yes, of course. Okay, and I want to read you a verse from the book of Hebrews. This is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 23 to 25. Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As is the manner of some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. Okay, so here the New Testament, wow, very clear. Do not stop gathering together as Christians. But as you see the day approaching, do it even more. Do it more and more and stir one another up to love and to good works. I said to you, how do you live a life? of continual hope and encouragement. Well, there we see it. You do it by regularly, physically gathering together with other believers. When God wants to destroy a religious system and the influence that a religious system has on people, what does he do? He destroys its physical meeting place. Now, the converse is true. When God wants to encourage a religious system, when God wants to encourage the relationships and the, 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 the ordinances and the word upon which it's built, the belief system, when he wants to encourage it, what does he do? He gives that religious system physical meeting places. Now, in the New Testament, the church is not a physical place. Of course, we know that. The, the, the temple of God now is not one building in Jerusalem. It is the church itself. We are the stones. We're the living stones of a, of a temple. But that does not make the reality and the expression of the church an entirely spiritual thing. We see throughout the scriptures, and I've just read to you from Hebrews, that God still wants a physical reality, a physical dimension to this Church, he wants us to gather together because that is what buildings do. What did the temple do? The temple itself was not a somehow like holy thing. The stones themselves weren't like full of the Holy Spirit, sort of vibrating with power and glowing at night. The thing that made the temple what it was, was that that is the place where people gathered. It is the gathering of human beings who live in physical bodies, who have to physically come together and gather together. And of course, there was the presence of God as well. But that's the, that's the point, that's the truth of the New Testament, that when we gather together physically, there Jesus is in the midst of us. And there we stir one another up to love and good works. And so where do we gather? Well, we gather in local churches on a Sunday. It is good that you are a member of a local church. It is good that you get to church on a Sunday. Because there you are gathering physically with other believers to sing the songs of God together. To listen to the word of God together. To pray prayers to God together. And to talk with one another afterwards. And encourage one another. And pray with one another. And, and stir one another up to love and good works. That's going to happen. When you gather together physically. And then it's good that you do so more and more. As you see the day approaching. So don't just do it on a Sunday. As we read the book of Acts, we see that they gathered every single day from house to house they were gathering. So it can be the church building on a Sunday, but in homes during the week, gather together with other Christians. Okay, so I'm going to repeat the point I've made from the verses we read this morning because I think it is such a powerful principle to understand the importance of a physical reality. To the expression of the worship of God and our religion. Because of the impact that it has on us as a community. 
So the, the point I was, I was making was that beliefs have parking places. We, we, we drive somewhere, we park somewhere. And, and that's where the belief system is inspired and stirred because we come together around it. Okay, so here's, here's the, the point I made. When God destroyed the Old Testament religious system, one of his major acts to destroy that, the, the impact of that, the, uh, the power of the religious system of Israel, which allowed the gospel then to spread around the world. It would never have happened if the temple had not been destroyed. And the, and the Jewish evangelists, the, the ones who had been saved, then were scattered throughout the known world because there was no longer this, this, this place that created a physical confinement to the expression of, of Christianity, which it was in the early days. You know, the church used to gather in the temple itself. And God swept away that physical building. And because the physical building of the temple no longer existed, it, it just liberated the gospel that then went all over the world. But that did, doesn't mean that the church itself does not have physical expressions to it, its worship. It does. When God destroys a religious system, he destroys its physical expression, its physical meeting place. But when God wants to encourage a religious system and a community around it, he, he wants us to have physical meeting places and he wants us to gather together. So my friend, get to church on a Sunday. Get into a midweek meeting. Gather together with other Christians. And I'm telling you, what you will experience is an elevation of your spirit, a life of increased hope, a life of increased joy, better friendships, more focus on what you believe and what you commit yourself to, more discipline to live a life of holiness. All of these things come from gathering together physically with other believers. God bless you. See you tomorrow.